All right, welcome back. Time to jump aboard the Solutions Express. I love a good whistle. Admittedly, we've spent a lot of time today talking about all sorts of problems holding our country back. Banksters pocketing our cash and giving us nothing in return. Corrupt politicians taking the public's trust in Congress away from all of us. And now even the best local leaders are struggling to get out of the red. Check this out. Out in Newark, New Jersey, it will soon be BYOTP. Bring your own toilet paper to work. Mayor Cory Booker ordering the government to stop buying the bathroom necessity in order to save cash. Meanwhile, New York City's Mayor Michael Bloomberg considering charging for trash pickup. And in Maywood City, California, it's telling all its public employees you are fired as they look to outsource jobs like policing, school crossing guards, and the like. So, how do we fix it all? Joining us, George Munoz and Ed Crago with, the idea, with ideas for how you can change this country for the better. Not how they can change this country for the better. How you, me, all of us can change this country for the better in the way we spend the minutes of our day. They are the authors of the book entitled Restoring the American Dream, a citizen's guide for restoring our competitive advantage. And again, it's not about pointing the finger at them, the Democrats, the Republicans, the rich people, the poor people. It's what we can do, you can do individually as a member of the Solutions Express to deal with this. Uh, a pleasure to see you both. George, how do we deal with the bank theft? Well, the banks uh, are, should not be allowed to consolidate as much as they're doing. The first thing they're doing is getting rid of the, of the lending officers in the communities. They're pushing out the community banks, and those are the ones that are best in touch with the small business. So, so we know that's the problem. What's the solution? I think the Federal Reserve does have the power to insist that those banks, when they close down the local community banks and, and consolidate uh, branches, insist that they have lending officers and, uh, and offer program uh, small business lending. Political, direct political pressure on the Federal Reserve. I think that's a re that's a reason banks exist. Uh, uh, moving on to the corrupt Congress, Ed, how do you deal with 11% approval, John Kerry dodging taxes, Charlie Rangel? I pick on those two, but I could pick anybody in the room almost at this point. Well, Dylan, I think one of the major things is Congress loves to hold hearings. And one way we could get at this directly is for Congress to hold a hearing on its own dysfunctionality and to look at the way the system works and if the system is broken to come up with recommendations to solve and uh, correct the system deficiencies. Uh, what, of the, what, what about the fact that the, the solutions to fix it and the suggestions are abundant from money in politics to open primaries? Right. There's no shortage of suggestions. Yeah. It's just that it's not in the interest of the people that currently serve our country to actually take them. Right, but by holding hearings that are open and public and letting us view them on C-SPAN, on your show, sure. we're going to become alert citizens and we're going to advocate for changes and you can run but you can't hide. Makes it harder to get away with exactly. it if you bring it up, if you exactly. turn the lights on. Uh, what about the busted municipalities? Cory Booker is one of the most invested, most in well-intended leaders we have for a municipality in this country uh, and he's inside out ten ways. Oakland's firing cops. Well, you know the story. I think the federal government needs to be able to guarantee some bond issues for these states, but as a condition to let bonds be floated for revenues for these states is that some of their pensions have to be restructured, some of those old debt. If the bonds only go to pay old debt, that's not productive. It doesn't create the right kind of jobs. So I do think, you know, I was the head of OPIC, the Overseas Private Investment Corporation in the Clinton administration. We have a development bank for emerging market countries so that they could create jobs. We need that kind of bank for the United States. I call it an APIC, the American uh, Private Investment Bank Corporation. Sounds like a, a beginning of a solution to me. Finally, Ed, a citizen's guide for restoring our competitive advantage. Right. We know that basically in the minutes, we're like an oil painter who talks right. about all the grand painting we're about to make, but you walk in the studio and they're using finger paints, and you're like, right. hang on a second right. here, you guys are talking about Monet, <laughs> but you got a finger paint set out over here. Right. How do we actually improve the way we make decisions from one minute to the next ourselves so that we can then do a better job with our politicians? Dylan, the basic thing is we need to become 21st century citizens, and 21st century citizens do three things. First, they are independent. They don't walk the party line. They don't, they're neither Democrat nor Republican. They are independents. They become informed. They do their research. They do their homework. They study the problem. They just don't go off half-cocked. They understand what's required. Because they heard required. something from me or right. somebody else. Yeah, yeah. They, it's, it's useless. It, it, yeah, it's bad just news. Form your own opinion. Then get involved. Pick the issues that matter to you. Once you understand what matters to you, get involved and advocate and roll your sleeves up and don't just be a critic. Just don't be a cynic. Don't just be a skeptic. Get out there and make 
something happens. Thomas Jefferson, I'm sure, would be right with you two on that one. Uh, if, we, if we don't take responsibility. So would Thomas Paine. And so would Thomas Paine. Last word, Lesson, lesson number one, First Amendment. What does the First Amendment assure? Is that people have a right to petition their government. And businesses petitioning the government, but where's the middle class? Where's, yeah. the, where's the rest of us? And that's right. what we need to do.